Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked because it's been a very long time since I've had to say that. <laughs> Shonen Archive <laughs> is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire lives to eventually getting through every single Shonen Jump anime. To one of these days watching every Shonen Jump anime. <laughs> exactly. With our main series currently being Gintama and the ones we promised to get back to, Kuroko and of course Yu-Gi-Oh! GX as well. Um, and we were gone for a very long time because right when we said, hey, man, we're really making good progress, we both got slammed with so much forms of work that yeah, we could Yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare record. for a while. Yes, it was a crazy time for me in work. Same thing for Zen. Um, I also, of course, got crazy busy with all the Fago stuff as well. And in general, it was just a hectic time. You know how crazy it is? The four episodes that we're going to talk about today, we already saw a long time ago. I, I think it's been like three weeks or a month since we... Yeah, yeah, I watched these... We're planning to watch this episode. Yes, I have it right here. I watched this on July 17th. Oh my god. It is... Yeah, it's been over a month for me, so... Yeah, that's, it's, it's been a minute. It has been a minute, so forgive us if we're we're going to be going over these. We watched these a long time ago. Thankfully, I have a pretty good recollection of what I liked from it. Um, but if we miss something, know that it's because of that, and we're just glad to be back to do it, talking about Gintama again. Yeah. <laughs> so let's it's, begin. It's been an ordeal. <laughs> it, it truly has been. I'm just glad to be back on Gintama and talking about it so that we can continue Gintama because we're on our 99th episode, and the next one is our 100th. So hopefully we'll be on track now. Anyway. Yeah, 100 episodes of this. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's actually over 100 if you count all the surplus. I don't know how to say that word. Right. Thank you. Those, but and then a couple other that we had to do for random, but I don't count them. Like, I don't count the one with uh, D3 where we talked about One Piece. Um, because oh, yeah. It, like, you have to be actually there for it to basically count as an episode. Otherwise, it's just like a side thing that is in the family, but not actually in there. Kind of like WWE Raw to NXT. I would not consider NXT <laughs> canon to the overall Fair. dealings of yeah. it. But it does happen, and it's there for the people who want to experience it. But anyway, today we're going to be talking about episodes 262 to 265, which is this is the end of the season, basically, that leads up into the movie. And uh, once again, the end of Gintama. <laughs> the f for the, for, this is not the last time I'll be saying this, but it's, again, the last batch of Gintama episodes, and the series is ending. So we'll start with episode 262, which is going to be, which is called... The sound of beam can pierce the heart of everyone, which is a weird, I feel like that's a weird phrasing for it, but we're just going to go with it. Yeah, um, that might be. Yeah, 262. Awkwardly translated. J just a little bit, but there you go. Um, so this episode starts with Tay sitting in front of her father's gravestone. She's giving offerings and telling her father um, she wants to restart the dojo. She says she's so sorry for forgetting her original character arc and forgetting absolutely everything that was supposed to be the driving force of her character and not picking up for it for another 200 plus episodes but she's going to be doing it now um uh she starts she says she saved up the money to start the revival and she prays for success um someone someone interrupts her praying and it's someone that she knows and then we cut to shimpachi um and she starts telling him about the plans about restarting the dojo, and then he says that whatever, you forgot about it, and you didn't remember it until you started re-watching the anime on DVD, because the most recent DVD came out and <laughs> something about it was mentioned of it. Um, uh, Gintoki and Kagura are also there. And they start talking about how like no one cares about learning swordsmanship in the modern day because it is illegal now. Uh, but Tai believes that... Um, there's a reason to keep old tradition alive, and despite the modern age, they're going to keep going forward. She also adds that to adapt to the times, they're going to be um, they're going to be focusing on beam swords. Um, and Chimpachi goes like, "Okay, well, who's going to be the one instructing it?" Um, and then the person that we saw at the beginning arrives, and then Chimpachi is super stunned, and then he starts crying, and he goes to hug him. And she starts mentioning his name and saying, I can't believe that you're alive. The guy's name is called Obi Hajime, which I believe ends up being... They call him Obi-Wan a lot in this, 
which is supposed to be an obvious parody of Star Wars, which a lot of this is. <laughs> very, yeah, yeah. Very obvious. The evil, the evil Yodas is my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they have, they really go all out for it, but yeah, if you can't tell with the beep swords and everything, but there you go. But yeah, Obi-Wan is here. He's a former student of the Shimura Dojo when it was open. Uh, he was really good. Uh, he was there. He ended up becoming one of the school's instructor at a un- young age, and he was just known throughout Edo for being one of the best in there. And he decided to study abroad in space, but as the terminal was going off, there was an accident, and it was believed that he died in it. And he reveals that actually he was teleported to a completely different planet where he learned the beam swords fighting style from the natives. Um, and that's why he now has the title of Galaxy Swordmaster. He's basically fought planet through planet um, to hone his skills. And when no one was able to challenge him, he decided to return to Edo to see everyone again. Um, And he was just sad that the school is shut down. And he tells him that we're going to make this school um, up. We're going to have it up and running again. Uh, Obviously, everyone is super happy about it, especially the siblings who they're big uh, um, childhood friends of his. Gintoki and Kagura don't really care, uh, but they decide to help him promote the school. Uh, No one wants to show up for it. Um... Obi suggests to Kentoki that they spar a bit. And uh, despite Kentoki's lack of knowledge of beam swords, believing that Kentoki will inherit the dojo due to Tai and him dating. And then she, Shinpachi says, like, they're not dating because Obi, it's really weird for you to say that when you were um, Tai's first love. And then she ends up, like, hitting him with something. Um, classic. She, classic. Yes, of anime. course. Cla- classic, classic action of here. Which is, you know, on Shinpachi's part, of really, you don't just bring that up randomly, <laughs> especially after you assume this man was dead for so long. Maybe don't bring this up. Um, what after the, the the reveal that this guy was her first love from so long ago, um, Kondo and Kube show up. <laughs> Because, of course, if they're going to mention that, then they're immediately going to take beef with him. And they decide to team up and attack Obi in the guise of wanting to join the school. Um, and they both end up, like, shooting him. <laughs> and he ends up being... <laughs> uh, like, they don't even bother going with the sword thing. Nope, they just straight up shoot him. And he ends up being perfectly fine. And he uh, fights back by shooting a laser beam from his right arm. Revealing that he's actually robotic. Um... And in space, a ship carrying short green skinned Amanto who look a lot like um, uh, Yoda are hovering over Earth and they try contacting their agent uh, without success and they're kind of annoyed and they decide to let him be. And then later on in the night, he starts to explain what happened. Um, they're also celebrating because they think that they actually have new students to their class, which is Kube and Kondo, who are just seeming to join because they want to kill him at some point and they don't think he realizes it. Um... And so Kondo asks Kube why about his robotic arm, and Obi tells him and shows him his body that he's basically all machine now. Uh, he reveals that during the teleportation accident, he actually arrived in another planet, um, and he'd actually just died. He didn't arrive, <laughs> he wasn't a living, he just died on that planet, and the natives um, were advanced enough to basically bring him back with the robotic parts, but he's basically a robot, more robot than he is human. It's the robot parts that are keeping him alive, and you have a kind of like, I guess, a ship of thesis kind of statement of like, well, are you act- is this actually you then, or is this a machine telling you that you are him, and stuff like that. But before any of that can continue on, and they start to question the existence of humanity, Obi shuts down, and he collapses, um, believing that he needed to actually get uh, true food, uh, true few food, which was the gasoline, and they thought he was joking, so Ty did not actually give him any gasoline, so they take him to uh, Gengai to get him checked out, and it turns out that what actually happened is that he was poisoned by something called dark matter, which is Ty's uh, cooking. Uh, he purges it from his body, and now he's just resting, and he tells him that... Um, the, the part about the robotic half is basically the only thing that keeps him alive. Um, and then they start to get really sad about it, but then they remember the promise that they made to Obi to always smile, even in the face of sadness. Um, and that they should be happy that he at least was able to return to him, return to them in some kind of form or matter. Um, and they, and during this time, Kube, Kondo, and Kentoki and Kagura were overhearing it and they decide to leave. I believe Kube and Kondo are just like, Man, now we really can't kill him because it would actually make her extremely sad if he was actually legitimately dead. They're like they're they're angry with themselves that they let their passion <laughs> take a hold of them and they're not realizing that this is actually someone that Ty uh, greatly cared about. Anyway, 
The next morning, Hijikata, Okita, and, um, and Tojo asked their respective bosses whereabouts just to see them both suicidal. Oh, the Freak. That's why I can't remember this name. Okay, so yeah, Hijikata, Okita, and the Freak asked, um, asked their bosses where they are. And both Kondo and Kyubei are extremely suicidal because they basically both lost Tai. Um, at the same time, Gengai calls to Gintoki and tells him something he found in Obi's body. Uh, Ichikata tells Kondo that there's a planet beam famous cre for creating beam cannons and they're threatening to destroy the Earth um, because the Earth is looking to pass a law that will make it so that manufacturing beam cannons is going to be illegal. And Kyubei watches the beam Amanto's broadcast telling the planet that they sent something to them and Gengai reveals to Gintoki that Obi has a powerful beam cannon inside him that he plans that is going to likely be set off into the planet. And if it's fired, then Earth will be in danger of being basically wiped out completely if he's allowed to shoot it. And that's where the episode ends. And that's episode 262. Zen, from what you can remember of this, what'd you like about it? Uh, it was pretty good. I enjoyed the obvious Star Wars references. I thought it was pretty funny. Mm. Uh, I, I like the two stalkers teaming up. That was one of my favorite like comedy bits. Was when they were suddenly like buddy buddy. We're on the same team this one time. Yeah, because yeah, normally they hate each other. <laughs> yes, but they were, or or at least Kube doesn't like him. I don't think Kondo hates anyone. But not really. No, not really. Uh, yeah, it was it was funny watching them team up to try to kill this guy because fuck that guy. <laughs> um, and I think it's really funny that the bad guys are little Yodas. I don't remember if it's revealed in this that they're little Yodas yet. You, you see, like the little Yoda heads back of them. But yeah. Later, like later on, they are they... just like little little evil Yodas. I think is <laughs> awesome. It it's, is it's great. Pretty good. Um, uh, yeah. I similar to you. I really did like the idea of Cube and Kondo teaming up together, and they have really good moments throughout it. And it just makes me. It reminds me of that moment between. Um, um, Zura and uh, Hasegawa, where they're like hanging out and they're buddy buddy, and <laughs> they actually will play off each other very well. And then uh, Hasegawa has to bring up, I don't think we've actually talked to each other until just right this yeah. moment. <laughs> I don't think we've ever spoken before. <laughs> no, but for some reason, these two just fit perfectly well together, and they actually have like a lot of good moments, and they're both united in their love for Tai. So even though you would think that absolutely Kyubei would absolutely hate Kondo because they share the same thing of like, well, I'm not actually interested in you as a woman. I interested in you as a love rival. It completely changes the dynamic between them. <laughs> so it's a fantastic stuff here. Some other things is that Kentucky's drunk for a lot of it. And, um, uh, at one point he called jobber. I think he called Kyubei a jobber for some reason. Yeah, he does call Kyubei a jobber. <laughs> And he says, like, I need you to word the, write the word jobber a hundred times before tomorrow. And my exact reaction was Gintoki saying he's going over on Kyubei on this one. I'm sorry. Um, which is pretty good. But yeah, yeah I, I, Gintoki I, said that doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> that's not going to work for me, brother. I'm sorry. It's gonna, it's, uh, I know this arc is looking like you could have some moments, but I think this is the one where I'm going to be taking over. But yeah, I, I like the start of it, and I did like the introduction of this character that you'd think in like 260 episodes never mentioned one time, but is actually super important to them, but they make you feel like it is actually important to them in some kind of way. And the reason that they didn't bring it up is because actually they watched this man get blown up, and they meant a lot to them, so of course they wouldn't bring him up because they're like, I don't I don't know, man. It was a very hurt... <laughs> I watched him yeah, blow it up. Yeah, it was a hurtful time, yeah. Yeah, and so you can at least feel when um, Shimpachi goes for the hug that this means a lot that he's actually legitimately alive because he assumed he had lost him. And it actually plays into the upcoming episodes too because some, uh, some real stuff happens here. Because this is only a three-episode arc, but they get all the beats of what you would expect from a Gintama arc off and running as soon as they can. Yeah, the first one is, as as is tradition, it's the silly one. Yep. And then it becomes progressively more nightmarish as we go forward. The next episode is the action one with some emotion, and then the final episode is just straight up all the emotion payoff. Uh-huh. And that's it. And then they also have to put in the epilogue of the do 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 do, and we're all happy and good now. But let's move on to episode two sixty three, which is the title Two Brothers." Um. Okay, with the world watching from the telecast, that the beam Amanto revealed that the Earth has basically twenty four hours before the implanted beam cannon fires, and it's going to spark a galactic war unless the Earth's government reverses the stance to make beam cannons illegal. 
They also add that the president has a self-defense system that will destroy the planet if anyone tries to stop it. Gengai tells Gintoki that the planet beam is a weapons manufacturer, but don't get involved in politics. Um, there's also a radical sect called the Firestarters who like to create wars. That Obi is most likely a false hero created by them, and they might, and he might not be aware what he actually is. Um, meanwhile, Obi um, wakes up to his machine part and encounters Shinpachi before. And then he like he's like machine because you can tell because there's like a red eye, and then he returns to normal when he sees Shinpachi. Um, and they decide to have like an exercise together. And then Gintoki asks Gengai if there's a way to stop the cyborg while um, Tai is actually watching uh, from outside. Um, and then the Shinsengumi and the Yaku clan prepare to search for the cannon and to build a shelter for the Shogun, specifically. Uh, Kondo and Kubei come to the realization on what or who is the Firestarter's present, because they both realize it's, it's him. It's the character that just showed up and is a robot. It's him. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's him. <laughs> we gotta it's go. It's the guy that just, is just now here and also is a robot. And then the new character who, uh, the, the woman we love would be devastated if something happened to him. It's him. We have to go get him. <laughs> uh, it's late afternoon. Obe and Shimpachi are taking a bath in the bathhouse. Um, Kagura is monitoring the temperature. Um, and I think they have a joke here of, like, they get in there and Shimpachi's immediately like, this is insanely hot and because he's a robot, he doesn't care. <laughs> yep. It's like, oh, it feels nice. Gintoki's watching for the door and wonders um, where he's actually hiding the cannon. Um, Gengai gave him a special katana that will temporarily disable the... The special defense system, so Gintoki can actually destroy the machine half of Obi. Uh, he tells Gintoki again that there's just no way that you can save him. Um, Tai arrives and asks Gintoki about why he's near the bathhouse, and he basically says that um, he tells her the truth. He says, "I'm here to kill your first love because he's a cyborg, and I knew you were ears dropping on him, and he's literally a cannon that is going to destroy the entire Earth if he is not dealt with in some kind of path." some in some kind of way there's just like no way he's like just straight up I, I have to do this it has to be done this way um and then inside the bathhouse shimpachi is watching uh is washing uh obi's back and he admits that um that the cyborg was still super strong just like he was in the past and obi responds to shimpachi that shimpachi is stronger than him and he feels hollow despite becoming a sword master because he realized that the true strength comes from protecting someone that's close to you and wishing that he had actually visited Japan sooner. And then just going off and like doing the master thing. And Shinpachi gets angry at him, saying that you're basically giving up. And um, and he realizes to... And it makes him realize Shinpachi knew who he really was, which is that he was always like a robot of some kind. Um, tai kind of is crying to Gintoki, saying you have to let him live just a little bit longer so that her brother can have their brother figure back. Um, and Shinpachi is, again, sadly talking to him, wishing that if it wasn't for the bomb, um, he would be happy to see the interaction between um, Obi and Gintoki. Um, and then Obi admits that he was going to plan to kill himself that morning because he can't actually restrain the human side, the machine side of him anymore. Um, but he wanted to see them one more time before he did it. Um, and at this point, the machine actually turns on, and he do Shinpachi doesn't notice it, but Gintoki does. And before Obi can continue on, Gintoki stabs him with the mechanical side of the chest, and making both of them go like, oh, what the fuck, and then Kagura as well. Uh, Shinpachi tries to stop him, but is immediately thrown away and Obi is able to escape. Shim uh, Shinpachi demands Kintoki to ask him why he attacked him. Um, Obi knew and understood what was going on. He was going to end it himself, and Kintoki says that Obi's body was not his own and that he didn't realize that that was a machine currently, he, that he was about to die. And I think we do see that there was a part where the, the machine part of him was going to kill Shinpachi right there. And I think he says later on, I was planning on it, but then you stopped me. Um... And all you're just being sent. I, I think he's talking to himself, and he like runs off, and he's like, "Ah, that man realized I was gonna kill that kid, or yeah. something like that." And I don't little, think he says it out loud. He doesn't say it out loud, just in case anyone didn't pick up a little while ago. But he does tell him, which is pretty fucked up, that you're getting sentimental over a corpse. Um, and he adds that he's gonna save the world and finish the job by just killing him, and this makes uh, Shimpachi super angry. And he goes to hit Gintoki, but Gintoki like slams him his head into a tree. 
Uh, and Shimpachi has to wonder why his big brother figures are so different. And then Chim- uh, Gintoki says, like, I was never your big brother material in the first place. And then he leaves. Um, and both Tai and Kagura, like, uh, tend to Shimpachi because he's just uh, having a really bad day with one of his brothers. Yeah. One of his brotherhood <laughs> figures is actually an evil robot now, and the other one just said, I'm not even your brother, dude. Don't worry about it. And <laughs> he's having a bad day, and also he's still naked from the bathhouse. Really bad day. Um, so oh, the machine Obi, he notices that his self-defense system wasn't activating while hopping rooftops and escaping. He realizes that Kentoki did something to him when he attacked him. Uh, and he also brings up the fact that he could sense his killing intent for Shimpachi. Uh, some of the Shinsengumi led by Yamazaki find him and they fight uh, Obi for a bit and then he runs him off and he flees. Uh, the shouts notify Gintoki that he's nearby and then back at the Shimura residence, the Shinsengumi and the Yagyu school are searching the house looking for Obi and Shimpachi is, uh, yells at them um, and he yells at Hijikata and the freak. For taking advantage of the... Hijikata and the freak. <laughs> the, the freak. He's not acting very freaky. He's actually just following orders in this case. Um, for taking advantage of the Obi Manhunt to basically get uh, closer to Tai. And they tell the siblings and Kagura that the person who asked them to be there was at, wasn't was actually them, but it was Gintoki. Um, and then in a half-constructed building, Obi tries to contact his masters, but he's interrupted by an explosion made by Gintoki breaking through the wall, and Obi ad- admits that he underestimated um, uh, Gintoki. Uh, and then Gintoki responds that um, they're not, that basically my relationship with Shimpachi is not one of being brothers. And then they go attack each other with the swords. They have a sword fight. Okita interrupts Hijikata and tells him that the regular police were now outside the residence, and the freak and Hijikata will stall them. And then Okita reveals that Kentucky basically begged him on his hands and knees, basically uh, bow- bowing between them, which is like the ultimate sign of asking for something in Japanese uh, culture, if I remember right. I forget, it's like called D- Dogenza or something like that. Um, and the two groups are basically saying you need to protect uh, o- o- Otai, Shimpachi, and Kagura, um, figuring that they were going to be connected because of the their ties to Obi. Um and he needs to deal with the cyborg. Uh, he needs to deal with Obi himself. And Shimpachi demands to know why he would do that. And Tai answers that it's the samurai way of doing things. And he's actually looking for a way to bring back Obi this entire time. Um, and that shocks Shimpachi. And then we get back to Obi and Gintoki are fighting each other. And they start uh, talking to each other. That oh, And he says, like, specifically, Gintoki's not trying to kill him. Um, that if he knows that if he kills him, he loses the trust of his friends and wonder why he keeps fighting. And Gintoki answers that he would much rather fight and die than be sentimental. And, uh, Obi continues to mock him, uh, to, specifically about this being a samurai stuff. Um, and he creates another beam sword with his arm and he keeps fighting back and he knocks Gintoki into a wall. And he kills Gintoki that the humans have subconsciously ignored the cyborg human side and Gitoki mocks Obi's being called a Swordmaster tile and tell him that the title of Big Brother fits better. He f- adds that no one will help the both of them and asks Obi to come back. And Obi answers uh, by using the beam sword to strike Gintoki through the floor, adding that Obi can't come back. He contacts his master again to be picked up. But the uh, Bimamanto and their hovering spaceship state that they've already retrieved them. And then just then the transporter explodes and Gintoki appears behind Kenobi and strikes. And the teleporter contains actually Kyubei and Kondo, who are both wearing the same hoods as him. And uh, Obi realizes that Kentucky has disrupted the transmitter. And he, along with Shimpachi and the girls, learn that as well as Kentucky is fighting him off. And um, as a distraction, as the Shinshin Gumi work to disable the actual cannon surrounding the ship. And Kentucky repeats that no one will help them and demand that um, Kenofi leave Obi's body and enrage the machine part of him attacks. Inside the enemy ship, Kyubei and Kondo are surrounded by the Firestarter faction, and Kondo admits that helping their love rival won't actually get them any points in this. And Kyubei adds that uh, that it's better than <laughs> they have it better than what Kintoki's trying to do, and because he had to throw away his pride to actually help, um, and will likely lose. Uh, basically, no matter what, he's in a losing position because he threw away his pride, and then he's also likely losing his brother figure with uh, Shimpachi. Um, 
And they also realize that the the uh, Kyube realizes that all the times that Tai ever smiled throughout her life, whenever things were bad or painful, was a direct thing of Obi. So she just wants to see Tai happy again, and Kondo agrees, and they both start fighting the faction by themselves. And we cut back to Okita as he watches the siblings and Kagura leave towards the fight, stating that little brothers have pride too. And then we go back to the freak and Hijikata agreeing, and stating that they should go to the respective big brothers too, because they both have them. And then back on the ship, the swordsmen defeat the faction, but the leader mocks them as they are unable to help Obi alive due to the time limit of the temporary disabled self-defense system. And then Kondo angrily yells at them to return Shinpachi's big brother figures in the building. Kenofi walks towards the defeated Gintoki, telling him that his systems will come back online in 30 minutes, and the only way to stop his beam cannon is to kill him. He tells Gintoki that his little brother and the planet will follow and the radius to blast to kill him. Instead, Kentoki is saved by Shinpachi, who slices off uh, Kenofi's mechanical arm and tells her that uh, he and Gintoki are not brothers. And I think he also says something to the lines of, like, why is everyone so interested in being my big brother? <laughs> Yeah, he, he makes a sassy comment about it. He's like, this is not, not everything's like that. No, we're done. And yeah, that is uh, this episode. There's a lot in this episode. <laughs> a lot going in here. For what you can remember of it, Zen, what do you like? Uh, I really, really liked the bit where Gintoki shows up out of nowhere and like busts into the bath and fucking murks the dude. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that shit was fucking cool. Uh, it, it took me completely by surprise. It's one of those, like, rare times when you're watching Gintama and you're actually like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it was really, really cool. I uh, also really liked the fight at the tower because Gintoki was acting, like, uncharacteristically douchey when he's like, you shouldn't even give a shit about this guy. Like, he's a fucking zombie with robot arms. Like, mm -hmm. And, and I was like, God, Jesus, like, what's going on here? Yeah, he's uh, so when they, they get the reveal at the end that he's, like, trying to trying to save him and he, you know, doesn't want to hurt him, um, I really enjoyed that. And uh, the fight was cool. It, yeah. it was a cool fight. It really was a really cool fight. I think fight. it's really funny that he actually has, like, a lightsaber and it just, like, hits the wooden sword. <laughs> fine. Perfectly fine. It's a strong-ass wooden sword. No need to worry about it. <laughs> like, uh... I keep wanting to call it Lake Toyota. That is not what he calls it. It's like Lake Toya, Toya something like that. Lake something. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm going to look it up now. I'm curious. Yeah. Um, yeah, similar to that. I really liked it. I liked a lot of the build up here. I liked learning a lot of um, like that scene of like. like Lake the fact Toya. Yeah. Lake Toya. There you go. Like I like both Shimpachi and Tai both realizing that something was wrong with him. And then they just wanted to kind of like keep living in what was basically a fantasy. Because but Shimpachi actually the thing that also surprised me is that he goes like I already know that like you're you're it dude like you're the bomb that everyone's looking for I'm not stupid it just it seems like it's pretty clear that it's you and doing all this and then also hearing from Obi's side of the the actual humanity side of him being like yeah I my original plan was actually to just you know off myself and be uh, done with it because what I had become. But then I had to see you guys just like one last time and that was enough to make him basically stop and not actually go through with it. Um, it was a, it was a lot of good building up and character stuff and I like the the whole dim dynamic between everyone. The way Gintoki was acting like a real dick at the beginning to make it seem like, oh yeah, I, basically I need them to hate me so much that they wouldn't want to follow me because otherwise they will. And that's not going to happen because what I'm going to be doing is basically tantamount to suicide because i have to figure out a way to get this guy this humanity side of him out again and there's almost no way of doing it safely and if they're there it's only going to make it harder for me to do it so really liked it and then he also looked out from him and also seeing that scene of him just like full-on bowing and basically begging for the help of him was also another thing of like damn this is how you know how much he know he knows how much this person means to them so he knows that there's just it's a shitty situation that they're in. There's, like, no easy way out any way you look at it. But he's trying his best to do what's best for them without actually hurting their feelings too much. It's good stuff. Very good stuff. So let's get let's bring in it. Speaking of good stuff, it's time to unfortunately end the good feels of this as we get to episode 264, which is Liquor and Gasoline, Smiles and Tears. Um, 
Shibachi saves Gintoki from Kenofi and strikes back at the cyborg, um, but Kenofi stops it, breaking the sword. I'm just going to say right here, Kenofi is obviously the machine part, and then Obi. That's what it was, is Obi Kenofi. That's how it, <laughs> it came out that way. So Kenofi is the, the machine part. Um, Kenofi is stabbed uh, by his own beam sword from Gintoki. He is thrown to the side while his body is badly injured, and Silver and uh, Gintoki fall. It collapses. Shibachi tells Gintoki that... Um, he and Tai and Kagura were told everything from Yamazaki, along with there being no chance to bring back Obi. And Gintoki is struggles to his feet and under the siblings, like, super sad looking at him and tells him that he promised that he will find a way to bring him back Obi, and that is what he's going to do. Um, and then he curses himself because he's like, damn, I'm also really super fucked up right now. Uh, Shimpachi tells him that it's enough, even if Gintoki succeeds in saving Obi and Earth, it wouldn't be the same if Gintoki ends up dying to do so. Um, Gintoki was never much of an authoritative figure as a role model, but as long as he's around to share their pain, then that makes him happy. He tells, uh, he tells Gintoki that he will take over and he is no longer Obi's crybaby little brother or the beam saber school student. He is instead the Tendo Mushin hair and the, and he says that my, he says his full name, Yoro, Yorozuya Shimpachi, and he asks Kagura to take care of Gintoki while he goes to pr confront Kenofi. Um... And then he gives him his, uh, Gintoki gives him the Bakuta, which is, I believe, his sword. Uh, Kenofi, yeah, that's the, wo the wooden sword. Yeah, I forget that wooden swords have, like, their own thing. They just, they don't do like us and just say, this is sword, this is wooden sword. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's a Bokuto. Fair enough. That just, that just means a wooden sword, I'm pretty sure. I'm pr pretty sure that's what it would mean. Kenofi mocks Shinpachi for thinking that he has a chance, when even Gintoki, who is much stronger than him, had no chance. Uh, Shimpachi remarks that Gintoki was here to save him, not kill him. So Kenofi would have already been destroyed if he wanted to destroy him. Classic power scaling debate here going on. Shimpachi mm, yeah, isn't yeah. here. Was he going all out? Shimpachi's exactly. really on the Twitter the Twitter boards right now. <laughs> He's exactly on the Twitter board saying, just saying, if Kentucky was at full power and not someone who wanted to kill, he would have already killed. So there you go. He adds that he will bring back... Kentucky was not bloodlusted. <laughs> He needed the bloodlust in him, and then he would have gone for it. Uh, he adds that he will bring back Obi himself, even if he kills Obi and suffers because of it. Uh, and then Tai declares that she will be the judge of their duel, wishing that Obi could have seen them as they are right now, who, um, because they are strong enough to stop him now. She wants them to be. He want. They wish they could have seen that they were strong enough to now be able to actually legitimately stop him. She starts the match, and Shimpachi rushes, rushes towards him, and he calls out Obi's name. Before countering, uh, Kenofi sees Shimpachi attack the same way he did in the past when he and Obi sparred. And then to, to everyone's uh, surprise, Obi calls out to him in the two strikes, so he's able to take over from the machine part of him. Uh, he admits that both of them are strong now, and since he had been gone, both of them have become so strong, and he collapses. And uh, Shimpachi is declared the winner. And at the same time, the Firestarter group loses contact with Kenofi. And the leader angrily berates them all, saying that they're all just useless junk. Kyube and Kondo point their swords to the leader. And Kondo declares that Obi was not such. He was a samurai that he finally returned home. And before he can tell the other Shinsengumi officers to arrest him, the floor beneath the cops and Kyube opened up. And on Earth, uh, Obi compliments Shimpachi's strike. But he, like, denies that it was enough, and he reveals that in some of their spars, the instructor had always let Shinpachi win with the usual statement about how he had grown stronger. And Obi responds that this time he was serious, that he actually was stronger than him in this instance. And it was thanks to both of them and Gintoki that he was able, able to actually beat off the machine Kenofi and learn about <laughs> true strength. Phrasing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Give me a break here, man. I usually don't do these. <laughs> Kagura interjects and tells him not to go and stay with the stay with them, and he answers that he has some unfinished business in space. Uh, back on the ship, uh, Kondo holds a trapdoor ledge while he's holding onto Kube's hand, and their meter lock uh, mocks them. The little Yoda die uh, mocks them for underestimating them, and remarks that the cyborg still has an unlit bomb with enough power to destroy the earth and he adds that um he'll light the fuse himself before pondo can even say anything he loses grip because kubei remembers that oh yeah i don't like dudes touching me and she immediately <laughs> starts beating the shit out of him but it's okay because they fall out of the ship and they safely land inside one of the shinsengumi ship uh, with hijikata right there 
and Kanda warns him um, that they have to stop the ship from fire the laser beam at Obi's location because it's going to blow up. Uh, he's going to blow him up. On Earth, Obi rises to his feet and tells the siblings that um, after he finishes his business, he'll return and ask Kintoki to take care of them. Um, Kintoki starts to leave, telling Tai and Shinpachi to come, and the two tell Obi that they won't cry anymore and that um, um, they promise that they're going to meet again at some point before they all leave. Back in space, the Shinsengumi are bombarding the fire starter ship to know it's not working at all, and it prepares to fire its cannon. They lock into Kenofi's location just to see that their dude is actually still alive, and he's aiming the beam right back at the ship. Uh, the two fire at each other, and Obi disintegrates from the force of the blast, destroying the ship. And he thinks back to all the laughter and tears that he had with um, Shinpachi and Tai. Um... And, but unfortunately, he says that there was um, no way for them to keep their promise to each other, and he lets out a tear, and he lets out the full power of them, and uh, as they watch it happen, they are smiling and watching it all go down, but they start to cry as well. A month passes by, Kondo and Kyubei go to visit the Snack Smile to see um, Tai if she's there, but they keep getting turned away. Um, Tai had asked for a leave of absence from their... Um, what is the host club? Yeah, the hostess club that she works yeah, at. Yeah, the hostess club. <clears throat> um, she hasn't returned yet with Shimpachi. The two are both really sad because they weren't able to save Obi. Um, and they're not even able to comfort the siblings at all uh, when they needed it when they need it the most. And Kondo states that they can only wait to overcome sadness and the two will be there smiling when it happens. Except both of them are actually both okay and they just came back from Hawaii and they both have a tan now. And they used Obi's life insurance. Yeah, they uh, used his life insurance <laughs> to go to, to Hawaii. Go to Hawaii. <laughs> it was supposed to be used to revive the dojo, and instead they used it to go to the planet Wahihi, which is basically planet of Hawaii for vacation. And he just bought a fuck ton of chocolate covered macadamia nuts. Uh, and Kondo goes like, they've lost their mind. Look at them. Do you see this? They're so crazy. Uh, look how quickly they overcame his death. Um... And now they decide to use the con they decide to use the the macadamia nuts to revive the dojo itself, because um, they say like, hey, basically do these lessons, get some chocolate covered macadamia nuts. They get their first group of people to join up for them, and it's just a bunch of homeless people, including Hasegawa, who are like, we were promised macadamia nuts, um, and they start going unruly because they're like, give us the damn macadamia nuts. <laughs> we don't yeah, care. Yeah, like, we just want the nuts. <laughs> we just we want don't the care nuts. about the swords. And then Kentucky silences all, all down. And he basically says, like, I'm the instructor here. If you want, um... He, he calls himself, like, the Tendo Mushin Macadamia instructor to get their nuts. Basically, come get them if you want them. And he adds that, uh... They'll keep smiling throughout the entire thing, no matter how tough uh, it, the training, or life gets. The homeless people attack, and they're all pushed back by Kagura, Kondo, and then... And both Kondo and Kyubei decide to join, going like, yeah, you know what? Let's fuck up these homeless people, too. <laughs> Let's join in on the fun, I guess. Shinpachi, there's a more deeper reason for it. It's just funny that they just also decided to show up and start beating on homeless people. Uh, Shinpachi joins them as well. Um, and he, for a brief moment, he sees, like, two brother figures, uh, both Obi and Gintoki, um, as he goes to join them. And then Tai visits her father's grave and Obi's, who's right next to it. She apologizes to Obi for not using the money to revive the dojo, but tells him that um, her brother and their friends are doing just fine. And that's where this one ends, and it ends with the classic bit here as we look through and see everything. And that is the end of this uh, of this arc right here. Um, how do you feel about it, Zen? Uh, it was good. It was really good. The emotional bit at the end, especially when they're doing like the canon uh, blast when like the the Yodas are shooting their cannon, and then he shoots his cannon back at the Yodas cannon, and it wins. It was very emotional. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was really fucking funny that they spent all of his life insurance <laughs> on their vacation. Uh, I thought that was hilarious. Um, it was it was good. It was good. Also, the macadamia nuts were really funny. That they just like that's all they had. It's yeah. They are like, eh, we can use this here, and then they get the macadamia nuts. And then doesn't Kyubei like get into it? And she's like, you don't understand, Kondo, that macadamia nuts are the best nut. <laughs> yeah, I want to say it's something like that. Kondo's the only one who's like, nah, they've lost it. 
they lost their mind. Their grief has gone too strong. <laughs> they're delusional. Yeah, Kondo's like they're they're so overcome with grief that they're not gonna make it. And <laughs> Cube's like, you just don't understand macadamia nuts, bro. <laughs> Yep, and I also, again, really do like the shot of when they see what they're doing and uh, they're seeing that, in a way, they are listening to what he said, which is finding a way to laugh and live life. They're like, you know what? Let's join in. And they have the classic shot of like them back-to-back with the wooden swords going, like, let's go. Let's join up with them, because <laughs> we are former students as well. It was a really nice moment, and it was a really good way of ending this, like, I guess, buddy cop dynamic between the two of them in this one arc. Um really well done and you yeah just like you i really like a lot of the emotional bits here that part again i'm a dragon ball fan it's gonna be very hard for me not to like some form of a beam struggle of any kind and this beam struggle was yeah very you good. know a beam struggle is a beam struggle at the end of the day like it's it's pretty sick yes it is and the beam struggle that he had between them and this is something similar from when we saw with the uh inside the tama with the with the white king as well where it's like anytime a character is facing down a gigantic beam while saying this is it everyone and he gives it all and he disintegrates i think that's good shit i think if any kind of media if every form of media had a form of this where a character's fighting so hard that they go like oh man this is it i'm sorry i couldn't keep my promise and they fucking disintegrate i think that's peak fiction right there i think that's, some that's of true it. it's hard to argue with that it, it's just the, the giving it your all to to do one last good thing before you die pretty sick. yeah as you go oh I'm sorry, but it looks like I'm not going to have to keep that promise. And then they go, Hurrah! and then the giant beam comes over, and they just fucking slowly disintegrate with a smile on their face. Oh, so good. <laughs> it's, that really is peak. It truly is. So for a tiny three-episode arc, I think it's uh, fucking fantastic for what it is. <laughs> Great stuff going on here, and especially because this yeah, is like... Yeah, it goes really hard. It does. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it goes really hard. It, it does. It's, it's a... We've had three, I think it's because we've had three episodes arcs in the past, and we've usually been like, oh, you know, these are fine, but either it wasn't enough time where the jokes, like, went over. This was literally, like, perfect pacing throughout it all, where it's just like, Yeah, I I agree that sometimes they overstay their welcome. Yes. Uh, This one did not. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes either they stay a little bit too long on a certain bit, but for these three episodes, it's just perfectly paced of just like, boom, 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 here we go, end here, perfect stuff. I loved it. Um, and then also there is a little bit of an end thing as they say, um, they promote the movie and it says in theaters, July 6th, um, watch as the Gintama anime comes to an end and they say, they give the name of it, which the name of the movie is Gintama B Forever, Gintama the movie, the final chapter B Forever Yorozuya. And when they reveal the title, they go back to them in their house and they go, wait, what? What do you mean that this is the final act? We weren't told ahead of time <laughs> that this is the final thing. So they actually act in real time and go like, wait, what do you mean? What? Wait, what? We're ending? And then it, it ends right there and it goes into the next episode. <laughs> so uh, really good stuff here. Really good episode and a good way to end it as we get close to the wrap up. This is the final episode of it. And this one... Is a final episode, to, and uh, this one, oh my god, I, I think this one literally almost broke me down. I have very little notes on this one, because the entire time, I think my one note would have been, I swear to god, if they kill this fucking dog, this is the, the this yes, is Yes, I know exactly what you're referring yes, to. <laughs> d- yes, and, uh, yes, what is, I know exactly the moment, because this, I said the same thing. I said, I swear to fucking god. I said, dog, surely there's no way they can kill this fucking dog if they do I, I, this would have this the entire thing would have been literally us going i can't believe they killed that fucking dog i would have uh-huh. been so pissed because it looked like it was going like that for such a direction anyway let's go let's see episode 265 they better not kill that fucking dog but the actual that's English the title, title. <laughs> that's the title better not kill this fucking dog this dog better not fucking die and dry it like a little text here but the actual title they gave it is dog food doesn't have as much flavor as you'd think um, we got here, and when Sadaharu is super depressed, um, basically because they have given him th- a very little dog food, um, cause there's like a food shortage going on, um, and basically they've cut it into three parts, one for Gintoki, one for Kagura, and one for him, and he's like offended by it, um, he tries to, uh, like, tell the other two, like, hey, what are you doing? Like, this is dog food that you're eating. I know things are bad, but whatever. 
Um, and they, as they argue with each other, uh, Sadaharu leaves. Um, Sadaharu is super hungry and he runs into a stray puppy in a box. Um, <laughs> Sadaharu contemplates eating the puppy. Uh, and then decides, you know what, I'm not going to do it. Uh, and then he ends up being so sad about the puppy, he takes him with him. Over by the ri riverside, Sadaharu catches a fish and eats only the tail, while the puppy eats the entire body. And then that night, Sadaharu and the puppy sleep in the dome in the playground together. And the following day, Sadaharu drags the box with the puppy, um, trying to get the attention of other people. And he ends up getting the attention of Okita. And then back at the Shinsengumi HQ... <laughs> Everyone at the Shinzengumi loved the puppy, and then Hij Hijikata's like, man, we can't allow dogs in here. And then he ends up warming up to the idea of the puppy's charm. He's like, you know what? Maybe we can have a puppy in here. <laughs> and they just start to go through a test to differentiate different kinds of mayonnaise, and disgusted by the test, Sadaharu takes the puppy <laughs> to the streets <laughs> and says, I would rather live in the streets than try and eat mayonnaise. <laughs> Bold <laughs> statement here. Um... Where they run into, uh, they run into Saratobe or Oyame or, um, Sachan. Uh, all the different names that she's had, but mainly, mainly Sachan. <laughs> she takes them to their house and, um, where she says, like, uh, you can live here temporarily. Um, but actually her overall plan here, it, the reason, Sonaharu thinks that they're going to be okay because it's like, oh yeah, the, uh, Kintoki's pet. But actually what she wants to do is kill them both, wear Sonaharu's skin and become uh, Kintoki's <laughs> official pet. Uh, yeah. And then make <laughs> make a wedding dress out of the puppy belts. Um, and the dogs immediately live leave <laughs> because <laughs> Sonaharu realizes we need to get the fuck out of here. And Elizabeth finds them and then they're led to Katsura. Uh, Katra talks to them about joining into the anti-foreigner group and telling them to see the light and then he also gives them a tirade about how <laughs> during the game of kick the can back in the Shogun arc he's been hiding and waiting for them to find him the entire time <laughs> Uh, he's like, oh man, and they show him like during the events, he's like, oh yeah, no, I was right here in the temple, I was just waiting for him, you know, kick the can. But due to his body being stiff and idle for two straight months, he was unable to take care of the dogs because he's still recovering from it. And then he ends up giving a long-winded request to a doctor. Um, Sadaharu bites Katsura, and then he continues to drag the puppy through the streets of Edo. Um, and Sadaharu sees that the puppy's passed out. And he also sees Kagura, and they decide to uh, run off from where they were going to be because he does not want to be with them at the moment. Over at the bridge, Kintoki tells Shimpachi that they have a new job, and though um, Shimpachi is arguing because obviously they're looking for Sadaharu, uh, who's been missing for two days, Kintoki says, hey, the whole reason he left is because we didn't have any food. So if we have money for food, then he's going to obviously show up. So he's going to go do it. Um, Sadaharu tries to take the puppy to the vet over, but the vet are like berating him because he's just like huge, um, so they're scared of him. That night, Sadaharu notices the puppy's color says One Fourth Street, so they follow. So the following day, Sadaharu brings the puppy to the house, and he overhears Gintoki talking to the house attendees, and they learn that the owner of the uh, of the house died and was an avid dog lover and kept many in the house. Um, one of the, like, the, all, all his dogs basically died over time with him, except for one, which was a puppy. And after he died, the shitty woman decided to throw away the puppy. And then at the request, they request Gintoki to go find a puppy. Because they started, people have basically been hearing rumors of a puppy wandering around. And they're realizing, like, oh, it didn't actually die after we threw it away. Um, and Sadaharu heard all this, and... Um, uh, he basically goes up to him, and Gintoki tells Sadaharu if he turns in the puppy, then he'll be allowed to go back home. And then back at the playground, Sadaharu wonders about what Gintoki said, and then immediately a tailless fish is given to him by the puppy, because the puppy actually, even though it was sick, decided to do what it what Sadaharu did for it, which is go to get a fish for him. Um, and Sadaharu can't take it anymore, and he, overcome with emotion, decides to, uh, he starts crying. And the puppy consoles Sadaharu, and for a couple weeks, both of them are surviving on fish together. Um, until the point where it gets very sick, and oh my god, this sequence is so unbelievably fucking sad that they didn't even put down the description of it. But I vividly remember it. Um, over times, over the weeks, you see 
Sadaharu going through the fish and getting it together. But then at some point, the puppy is getting extremely sick. And the puppy is no longer eating the fish. But Sadaharu is still getting fish for the puppy. So what ends up happening is that eventually Sadaharu himself is getting very sick because he's not eating. And then the puppy is also not eating the fish. So the place that they're sitting in is actually being filled with like dead fish. Yeah, it's covered in the dead fish. It's covered in the dead fish. And it's like the flies are everywhere. And then finally it collapses, And then it looks like um, they start cleaning it. The reason that they even find them is because the smell gets too great. Like there's clearly something like rotten inside there because of all the fish and everything. So um, Sadaharu passes out. And then he wakes up in the uh, the hospital, and he's greeted by Gintoki, and he informs Sadaharu that um, all the money that they got from the attendees are basically being wasted on these vet bills. Um, and I think this is right right here where he tells him specifically, like, I don't want to... The reason that, like, one of the reasons why he's doing this specifically with Sadaharu is to teach him the lesson of basically, I don't want to actually live with someone who isn't willing to share the food when times get tough. Um, and he asks him now, are you ready to actually do it? And it looks like Sadaharu has basically learned the lesson of, like, what it actually means to be with someone when during the times are tough. He's also under the assumption that the puppy has died, and so is everyone else, because it make the way Gintoki's talking, it makes it seem like the puppy has died. But no, in fact, the puppy is perfectly fine. It's safe. And, um, the, the Kagura and Shibachi informed the puppy's new family that basically the family of the old man was looking for the puppy, and they were able to get him there. Um, everything seems like it's a happy ending, and then the vet comes to inform the group that, um, it's time to pay the pet bill, and Kentucky is not actually fully paid for any of the medicines that were needed, uh, and that, um, they just run off together, and they go like, all right, time to run away from the bill now. <laughs> <laughs> And that's where this episode ends, and this is officially the last episode of uh, Gintama, with the little uh, ellipses on the top of it, but it is the end of the season for all intents and purposes. It is, again, once again, the end of Gintama. <laughs> and that's this episode. Zen, how do you feel about it? Uh, I was I was real not happy about it uh, <laughs> at first. I was I was real pissed about it. Uh, it, it gets better, though, when the dog doesn't die. Uh, yes. I was very sure that dog was dead, um, but I guess jokes on me. Uh, the dog is not dead, but I was so very sure uh, yes. that it was going to to be dead. Yeah, it would not have been the all first dog that died. No, no, it would not have been. Uh, I was I was very sad the whole time, but the reveal at the end was good, mm -hmm. and I like uh, Gitoki just being like, "Well," <laughs> and they just run. <laughs> I thought that was funny too. That was very good. Yeah, um, I really liked this episode once it was revealed that the dog was okay. This episode is very hard to watch. If you have any yes. form of love yes. for dogs or animals of any kind, the way this plays off of you is some masterclass <laughs> shit. This could almost be taken out and made it to its own movie because of how much you feel of like the relationship between these two dogs. You would have to explain why one dog is an insanely huge dog. <laughs> But if you could explain that for the movie, this is a uh, excellent going through the two of them. Not a lot of dialogue. A lot of the characters they meet along the way also help make it feel a little bit better. Like obviously the cots are apart is some needed comedy in an episode that it gets very sad by the end of it. And I did like him explaining basically why he wasn't in the Shogun episode because you would think immediately, why wasn't Katsura in the Shogun episode? It's an entire thing about taking down the government and he wasn't there. And the answer was is that he was actually. <laughs> hiding because of the kick the can and he <laughs> they never found him <laughs> so funny his reaction there but yeah it was a uh... oh there's also a really good bit when as they're going through it and they're both like tired and they're like oh going through it they look to the side and hasagawa has a similar doghouse to the other ones and he's also saying please help me <laughs> and he just looks at him and he keeps walking slowly forward <laughs> Really good, but yeah, the the emotional parts of this episode are um, something else. Um, to the point where I'm like, uh, when when Sadaharu starts crying and the dog is like actually licking away his tears, I'm like, I swear to God, if something happens to this fucking dog, it's, there's never gonna be, you're never gonna hear the end of it for me. But then that, yeah, yeah, and the final shot of him with his new owner smiling, which is probably gonna end up 
maybe one of two cases of this being the cover for the episode here is really nice and it, it does it feel is a feel good ending and honestly it, it's a, a right way of ending the current series of gintama animes as we see for because i think this actually does a pretty good job of showing what gintama is actually best at at making you feel something for characters that are literally introduced in this specific episode <laughs> and caring about their well-being and also using a uh, array of side characters in an effective way to also help uh, make you laugh while also being still having an extremely a big emotional core to it so <clears throat> like i said and this this time the ending bit for this one is actually the 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 house and it actually just says there's no see you next week it just says see you sometime so really selling the fact that says this might actually be it and yeah for all intents and purposes this is basically it for the gintama anime this was the last episode released on 2013 the movie is also released i believe in 2013 and the next anime episode does not happen until 2015 so there's basically two years of not knowing if the Gintama anime would return or not, basically. Um, which we will cover about that when we come back to it. But that is the end for these batch of episodes. What are we going to be talking about next week? Next week is going to be episode 100 of Shonen Archive. That's right, 100 episodes of Shonen Archives, and we've made it. We did it. This is officially the third thing of ours that I think that has made it to 100 episodes. <laughs> Pretty um, crazy to think about, to be honest. It is. Would you take a, a guess to say what the other ones are? If you could, if you could uh, hazard a guess mm. about what the of potential things would be. Hmm. Something Dokkan Battle related, I guess. Probably. That, that'd be fair. Obviously, to be released is one of them. That would be it. Right. Uh, I don't know. Otherwise. I think the other one is technically Modcast, because Modcast is also its own separate thing from... Um, true, true. It did morph into... Yeah, after I was uh, kicked off of the mod <laughs> the mod team for losing my house and being unable to look after the mod, the, the Reddit, I was <laughs> kicked off the mod team. <laughs> yeah, then we had to change the name. Yeah, we had to change the name to TV release, so... That is technically the other one, and... Uh, that yeah that's basically it for it and, um we don't reach this all we do record a whole buttload of things but the terms of actually making it to number 100 very very rare <laughs> hey I think, it's tough to hit 100 episodes it's man. true i think the, i think the other commitment. yeah it is a true commitment i think our pokemon uh yellow playthrough also made it over 100 episodes if i remember correctly man I, that was so good it was so that good. and sacred cards might be where we peaked <laughs> but don't say that now <laughs> but, but, you're, but you're right we did peak with sacred cards which is unfortunate because the audio recording for sacred cards is some of the worst but it's also some of the it's best so things bad. we've ever done uh, but yeah it's oh man it is man it, i know blame blame my living situation at the time for that of having to record it where it was like i have to take this laptop and go somewhere else and recording off of a laptop that was like slowly burning my leg as I was trying to record Yu-Gi-Oh video and OVS at the same time. It was a it was a hell of a thing. But yeah, a hundred episodes. What is gonna be our hundredth episode? Well clearly we're gonna be talking about Gintama the movie, the final chapter, Be Forever, Yorazuya, which is gonna be the second movie, which was supposed to be in case the anime could not return, this was going to be the official end of Gintama. It was written in such a way that it would be basically wrapping up as much as they could and being like, all right, this is it. And thankfully, I guess they did eventually continue on, but there's a more to talk about that. But that is the mindset going into that one. So we will be covering that one next. And then the week after, well, week after, look at me being ambitious. The next Shonen Archive <laughs> after yeah. 100. Bold. We will Bold. come. Yeah, we will come back and we will talk about... Um, I believe we will start in the next season, which is, again, just called Gintama again. Um, but it has, like, a little circle on the top of it, but it's basically Gintama. And it'll be episodes 266 to 270, which will be another five-episode arc. And then we will start looking to look at how we can better cut a lot of these out, because this is where we start to get a lot of the... Um, we got to, we start to get a lot of like big arcs. There's one specific really big arc in here. There's two actually, and they're both near the end. And I will avoid saying what the name of the arcs are 
because they are probably big enough to be like, well, when we get to them, I'll mention them. But just looking at the name of the arcs is like, well, that sure sounds like an arc when you're ready to wrap up a series. <laughs> but anyway, we are heading closer and closer to the final of Gintama. And hopefully we will cover episode 100 next week. Um, I think my Wednesday is not looking that crazy. but My Tuesday is, but that's okay because we don't record on Tuesdays anymore. <laughs> It's Wednesday. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it for Show Narca this week and what's coming up next week. So, uh, if you want to support us, you can go over to Zen's channel. Zen, a lot of shit has happened in one month since Shonen and Chill. You've done a lot over there, correctly? <laughs> Correct? Yes, what's going on in yes. your channel? Uh, well, My Hero Academia is over. Correct. Uh, we've been we've been spared. <laughs> uh, the gods are, have been kind to us. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen on the way out. Yeah. Five chapters remaining. They've uh, given so their been... their countdown. That is correct. <laughs> Put up the number yep, five and said, so... "Get ready for it." <laughs> so we've been talking a lot about that, and then of course, uh, you and I have started up wrestling and chill, yes. which is the exact same uh, content format, but it's about the wwe except for nxt because i don't want to watch nxt <laughs> yes and i i've agreed with nxt and no other wrestling thing because at that point you don't watch any of those other wrestling things so it'd only be yeah, me talking about it it's too it's too much time yeah. for me to yeah, get exactly. through all that wrestling at one time it's a so lot you, so you won't hear me talking about the the vtubers fool moko having an actual wrestling match then they were trained by ddt pro wrestling to do it on for their 3d live you won't hear it on there but what you will hear about is a lot of talk about the judgment day <laughs> yes a lot of talk about the judgment day we do, we do talk about the judgment day pretty often <laughs> almost as uh, spoilers for the upcoming episode i have a feeling it's gonna be a lot about talking about everyone's favorite yep. trash boys <laughs> as we get closer to them trying to make them a threat but yeah a lot of stuff happened over in zen's channel yeah i saw that um you had put up the My Hero one, and just by seeing on the face, I'm like, man, you really did not like My Hero by the end of it, did you? <laughs> no. Compared I to had, where you started uh, it off, had for sure. quite enough, in fact. Yeah. Compared to where you started off, because if you don't know, you can find the early goings of Zen going through My Hero Academia on an old show, show of ours as well. Um, where we talked about the first season. We will probably at some point have to go through My Hero again, but not for many years. Not for many, many years <laughs> will we no, go through that. No, 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 no. We have other ones that we have to go through before we can go through there again. But, yeah, it's funny hearing the old early stuff and then ending where it goes and going like, yeah, man, what happened? <laughs> there, Something mm -hmm. happened for sure. But you can hear more about those thoughts over on Zen Way, Zen's Way. I'll say for my part, I need to uh, find new shit because I was like, damn, my hero's ending and then Jay Jutsu Kai's end. All I have left is... Um, I only have one manga left. No, I'm well, not counting World Trigger, I guess. Yeah, but eh, two because I have well, two. Who, who counts World Trigger realistically? It's it's hard to actually like, count World come Trigger. On. World Trigger is always just being worked on in the background very slowly because of the author's health. <laughs> so I just have to take it as like when chapters come in, that's when chapters come in. But I think it's literally just um, two at the moment that are ongoing. One is Chainsaw Man, which thankfully never gets spoiled. I have to just remember to wake up on Tuesday. Um, to catch it when everyone else does and the other one is uh assassin one that i'm currently forgetting the name of for some reason even though i'm excited for the anime coming out um sakamoto sakamoto days correct thank you hey, very much there it is i was getting it confused with the other one for some reason that i also don't read but for some reason in my head i was like i want to say it's something else but it's not that <laughs> <laughs> Sakamoto Days, which is very good um, as they're currently going through their stuff. So, I don't know. Maybe it's time for me to find new thing to read. Maybe it's time it actually is time to catch up on Kagurabachi and get my jump stuff in there. Yeah, hell yeah, it is. Yeah. Get in there. <laughs> get in there before. Get in there. Kagurabachi slams. All right. At some, I, I'm literally out of stuff. Like, it's that One Piece and. Uh, Sakamoto days. Yeah, I was still really surprised. Even though I knew, like, I actually was expecting it when they were going to do the reveal of, like, this arc is ending. I'm like, okay, cool. So Jujutsu Kaisen ends this week, right? That's how I'm assuming. <laughs> I was assuming that it was like, oh, yeah, this fight is coming to an end. I'm like, all right, cool. So the series is over then? That's what I'm going to assume here because this feels like this is where it's going. And then they were like, yeah, four, five chapters. <laughs> uh huh. Some of yeah, everything. Like it's, it's about time. Yeah, we're wrapping it. Yeah. 
get then that's gonna be fun when we get to talk about that for the anime episodes <laughs> can't wait for show archive on jutsu kaisen in the upcoming four years it takes for them to release those episodes but yep yeah, that's over on zen's channel over on my channel uh if you want to see a bunch of fake grand order stuff you can definitely come over to my channel where there's plenty of that um i think i got caught on some kind of algorithm so now i'm actually favored by them which is pretty oh, sweet shit. yeah yeah you're you're rolling it in yeah exactly I actually the, legitimately am and it's it's a little bit scary because it's now to the point where it's like well now i have to think about these videos a little bit more because before then, I would be able to just slam one out and go like, all right, it's, it's fine. The people who watch this are already, they like me. But now it's actually being sent to people who don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God. And it's like me going uh, like. It's, pressure. It's, yeah, it's me pressure. I'm like, uh, he goes like, how come you don't pronounce this character's name right at all? I'm like, oh, if you know the deep lore of me, Pecan, Pecan, Pecan. Yeah, you guys, you guys don't know the lore, man. <laughs> you guys don't know the lore. Okay, Dragon Ball Z came out, and there was a character there called... <laughs> it all starts there. So it has been very interesting going through that and dealing, seeing a bunch of new people go through there and um seeing comments that are like different from what i usually see it's weird when you suddenly see like a buttload of people that you don't know and it's like I, where did you guys come from I, I don't know but thank you very much for being here i appreciate it very much even you guy who says i sound weird <laughs> and the guy who followed everyone's up... gotta start somewhere yeah. you know yeah and it's funny when you if you look back at the actual starting point of mine my channel's actually getting pretty close to surpassing the uh the the reddit that we came from because if you don't know this the deep lore of me and zen is that we both started on uh do making dokkan videos back in the day um and the subscriber count for that one is about three thousand seven hundred something and i'm pretty close to beating that and my goal was beating that and that's officially me saying all right then i've now officially shaved off all forms of dokkan because now it's no longer a case of like the only reason people would follow you is because of you're related to the dokkan reddit and going back from there and now it's basically well now it's no it's not that anymore it's because people actually like me and do the like watching the shit that i do so it feels nice it's more of an ego boost thing than anything else <laughs> but it is cool and yeah so that's why you don't have to worry about too many ads on these even though this is like an hour long it's okay the other videos got you covered <laughs> you never have to worry about it that much um and yeah that's the end of shonen archive everyone thank you very much for watching we will be hopefully back next week but if we're not back next week we no promises we'll be back again soon we'll be back again soon and we're gonna try our damnedest to come back as soon as we can because we want to finish off gintama and deep doing it um but like i said both of us get insanely busy as we get closer to um specifically uh near the end of the year i know my job is going to be crazy so i'm going to do my best to kind of see through it there is going to be a bit where i'm going to be disappearing to vegas for a bit where i i finally locked it in so for august not from august duh that's now from october <laughs> 25th to october 27th i'm basically going to be in vegas uh, for a magic con, uh, not for not for like an actual magic con. Like I'm not there to see illusionists. I'm there to play Magic the Gathering, <laughs> just to make a, a separate. Because I think I actually told a coworker, yeah, I'm going to a magic con, and then they were like, like for like for pulling rabbits out of hats, like what, like like that. <laughs> like I'm, I'm like no, and it's unfortunate because I can't say MTG Magic the Gathering because then they're gonna think I'm like some kind of crazy Republican person. Yeah, like, no. they're like you're going to a Marjorie Taylor Green. No, rally. No, no, <laughs> please. Yeah, man, I it never it didn't cross my mind how much she's poisoned that uh, abbreviation. Oh, dude, it's terrible because when I type in MTG Twitter, it does not show me Magic the Gathering. I'm so angry that my abbreviation was killed by this woman. <laughs> so unbelievably pissed but yeah I'll, I'll be there chilling in vegas for a bit um hanging out at the con maybe doing some other stuff who knows um so if you, if you want to find me feel free to go to the <laughs> magic halloween con and find me somewhere out there playing some draft or playing something else who knows looking getting ready to buy more things who knows i'll be there but yeah the, there's a lot of stuff we had to plan for it'd be nice if we could finish i think we, it's possible for us to finish kintama by the end of the year but if not, that's assuming we hit every single date, but I assume that it's either uh, close to the beginning of next year or close to the end of this year, we will be finished with Gintama. 
and then we will continue on forward with the other things that we have to see. So, fun times, right? All right. That's the end of Shonen Archive for this week, for, for real now. Like I said, if you want to show support, feel free to leave a like. We appreciate it a whole bunch. Or if you have anything to say, we appreciate that just as much. But you never have to worry about this going away. Because like I said, me and Zen will find a way to come back to Shonen Archive. <laughs> Similar to the journey of uh, Gintama finishing itself, we try, we're try. we actually just replicating it ourselves. <laughs> of trying to finish our own project. Anyway, that's the end, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. I didn't forget that, shot you. <laughs>